Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on the PN house scene I've made in Twinmotion 2020. In this video we'll be looking at the light and sunlight settings, the materials and all the extra settings that we need to create this beautiful render. Hey guys, my name is Arne and welcome to today's video. This channel is all about rendering in Twinmotion, so if you want to get better rendering results, make sure to stick to the end of the video. Now let's start with taking a closer look to the lights. You'll be shocked because the whole scene is illuminated with only three area lights. The other light is all natural sunlight. The area lights are all built up to enhance the sunlight, especially in the back of the scene because there's hardly any light coming in. Let's have a look at the details for the area lights. Let's start in the back. We set the dimensions so the area light fills up the entire space with light. We leave the shadows to off otherwise it will look very unnatural. Now we need to find the right strength. You can do this by adjusting the intensity and the attenuation. The intensity shouldn't be too much, certainly not lighter than the sunlight we see in front of the scene. That's why I usually leave the number quite low and adjust the other parts with the attenuation. The shorter the distance, the less illuminated the scene will be. Leave this distance longer for a more natural light effect. This way, the light can fade over the entire distance. If you click on more, you can also adjust the edges angle. This ensures how sharp the edges are. For this light point, it doesn't matter, because you can't see it anyway. But for the next area light, this is important. Here, the edges angle is set to its maximum value. If you set it lower, the edges will also look sharper. We don't want to have this kind of effect into the scene. That's why we need to set it to its maximum value. The other settings are the same as the previous area light. No shadows, otherwise you get unrealistic looking images. And the general atmosphere for this scene also indicates that not much artificial light is used. Everything comes from the sun, so to speak. We only use a few light points to light up the dark spots and get a more natural looking image. That's also why the spotlights in the ceiling don't produce any light. Other settings are also based on the previous points. Keep the intensity low and the attenuation should be higher. We also use a slightly warmer color to mimic the sunlight. Now a question for you guys. What do you want to see for my next video? Another interior scene tutorial or an exterior scene tutorial? Please let me know by leaving a comment down below. Now the remaining lights are inside. These imitate a warm but soft interior light. We don't want a bright looking light, so the intensity is pretty low. The other settings are quite basic. That's it for the area lights, let's have a look at the sunlight. The sunlight is also quite normal. The only thing I've adjusted are the shadows. This is set to 40 meters so we get a sharper looking shadow. The exposure and the ambient are also left to their default settings. What's even more important than the light settings are the materials. You can have a perfect illuminated scene, but if the materials don't reflect enough or don't have enough depth, your wall render can be disappointing. Almost all materials are from Twinmotion. All the walls, the floors, the plants and the windows come from the library. Let's have a closer look at the walls. The wall on the left is covered with the soft concrete material and the wall on the right is covered with the poured concrete material. Each time I have adjusted the scale and the reflection until it feels natural. The ceiling and the floor have the most important material for the scene. These give the idea that the sunlight is carried all the way into the back of the scene. The materials both have a high reflection value. Also important is the grunge option. We added this to the ceiling to interrupt the reflection. For the floor we used the brick cobblestone material. I increased the scale for the material and increased the reflection almost to its maximum. This material also uses a parallax bump map. Set bump to its maximum to create some depth in the material. We also use this technique on the gravel material in front and in the back of the drawing. By default, the gravel material comes as a dark material. Let's change this by using the luminosity slider so we get a nice and brighter color. Also, the area light above has its effect on the material. Combine both the area light 
and a luminosity slider to get a great looking material. For the windows, I have used the brushed aluminium material. Pretty standard, we only change the color to black. We also use this material for the legs underneath the table. The chairs are done with a slightly worn chrome material. If you look closely, you can also see the reflection of the area light above. This also gives a nice effect as you can see in this shot. I can go on about the materials, but I think we've looked at the most important ones. Another very important point in this scene is the use of decals. We add this to bring more realism into the render. The most important ones are the shadows, which give extra depth to the render. This is certainly necessary underneath the furniture, as well as under and behind the plants. Some interesting settings for the shadow decal are its offset level and the opacity level. If you want a darker shadow, then you change the opacity level. And if you want longer shadows, then you can adjust it with the offset button. We leave this to 1 to create a shadow as low as possible. We also use this technique underneath the table and under the seats in the living space. This gives an extra realistic effect to the render, so nothing seems to be floating. We also use this effect with the plants to create some extra depth there. Without these shadows it would look very unrealistic. We also use this for details on the wall, so they don't have the same look. This way you can create an image that continues to appeal and doesn't look to be boring or repetitive. A final point are the reflection probes, which are added around the windows to generate a better reflection. The bigger the reflection probe is, the more it zooms in. Also important is that you set your pixels to its maximum in the twin motion settings. You can do this by going to Edit, Preferences or press Ctrl P, Reflection Probe Resolution and set it to 1024 by 1024 pixels. And now you should get a clearer reflection. That's it for today guys, I hope this helps you out. If you like this video make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And now it's up to you, which technique did you find most helpful? Let me know by leaving a comment down below.